Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction has complex physiology, but one thing we know is that increased left ventricular diastolic stiffness plays a key role. Unfortunately, a load independent, non-invasive direct measure of diastolic stiffness is still lacking. Now in the European Heart Journal, researchers tackle this problem and have come up with a diastolic wall strain index that is based on the linear elastic theory. Sounds complicated, but just think about it and it's not really. The linear elastic theory predicts that impaired diastolic wall thinning reflects resistance to deformation in diastole, which is the equivalent of increased diastolic myocardial stiffness. The researchers did a community-based study to determine the distribution of this novel index in patients with preserved ejection fraction heart failure and healthy controls. They wanted to find out whether the index was useful and most importantly, whether increased diastolic stiffness as assessed by diastolic wall strain index is predictive of outcome. Their findings are impressive. Overall, and not unexpectedly, diastolic wall strain index was lower in heart failure patients with normal ejection fraction than in controls. In addition, those with low diastolic wall strain index had higher LV mass index, thicker LV walls, higher Doppler estimated LV and diastolic pressure to end LV diastolic volume ratio, higher left atrial volume index, and higher BNP levels. But here is perhaps the most important finding within the group of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction patients, those with low diastolic wall strain index had a higher rate of death or heart failure hospitalization even after the adjustment for other factors. The data suggest that a simple index is useful in assessing diastolic stiffness and that more advanced diastolic stiffness is associated with worse outcomes in heart failure patients with normal EF. I'm Peter Block, and this is a CardiSource Heart Minute.